Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Patrick Boyle and I teach the Derivative Selective at King's College London at Queen Mary University of London. And uh, today I'm uh, going to talk to you about options. We're going to learn about options as a derivative. So what is an option? An option is a derivative financial instrument. So as a derivative, that means it's a financial instrument that derives its price from another financial instrument that we call the underlying. And so an option is a derivative financial instrument that specifies a contract between two parties for a future transaction on an asset at a reference price. The buyer of the option gets the right, but not the obligation to engage in that transaction, while the seller incurs the corresponding obligation to fulfill the transaction. So what does that mean? So we, we just in our prior videos, we've covered futures and we're, we're on to options now. And the big difference here with, with a futures contract, we've agreed to exchange at an agreed upon price at an agreed time. And so an option sounds an awful lot like that. But the big difference is that one of the two parties in this options contract actually gets to choose whether that transaction goes ahead or not. So with the future, it definitely goes ahead. With an option, one of the two people actually has a choice. They get to make a decision. Uh, they have an option to make a decision at some point in time as to whether they wish that transaction to go ahead or not. Now, it should be fairly obvious that the only reason they would decide for that transaction to go ahead is if the price is moved in a direction that is favorable to them. So, as you can see there, the buyer of that option actually has quite an advantage over the seller of the option. Okay, It's not like the future where they both just have different points of view about the direction of the market. In this case, they have different points of view, but the buyer actually has a significant advantage in that they get to make this decision. Now, the downside is, of course, that in order because one side of this transaction is significantly better than the other, um, the buyer of the option has to pay something to the seller of the option, right? Because if you were, if you, you wouldn't enter a transaction like that as the seller without being compensated for it, it only makes sense to charge an amount of money. So that is what an option is, a derivative that specifies a contract. So it's a legal contract, once again, much like a future was a contract between two parties. So there's always a buyer and seller of every option for a future transaction on an asset at a reference price. We call that reference price the strike price. And that can really be any price that the two parties agree upon. OK, so that's what an option is. But now we've got two main types of option. We've got a call option and we've got a put option. OK, so we'll start with a call option. A call option, the buyer of a call option has the right but not the obligation. And you're going to hear that term quite a bit in this video and in, in any of our videos about options, the right but not the obligation. So the buyer of a call option has the right but not the obligation to buy an agreed quantity of a particular underlying from the seller of the option at a certain time, which we call the expiration, for a certain price, which we call the strike price. The seller of the call option is obliged to sell the underlying should the buyer so decide. The buyer pays a fee, which we call a premium, for this right. So that's all it is. A call option gives you the right to buy the uh, the underlying from the seller of the call. Now our next option after that is a put option. And the definition of a put option is essentially it's sort of word for word the same as a call option, except that the buyer of a put option has the right but not the obligation to sell the asset at the strike price by the future date. And the seller has the obligation to buy the asset if the buyer exercises the option. And so once again, with the put option, we've got a premium. The buyer of this option pays a premium for this ride. And so what does that mean? Well, there's 
two types of options out there. There's a call and there's a put, and you can choose to either be a buyer or a seller of either option. So if you're a buyer of a call option, you're bullish, right? And bullish means that you expect the price of the underlying to go up. If you're the seller of that call option, you're bearish. You're expecting the price of the underlying to either stay the same or possibly fall, but you're, you're not expecting a rise in the price. So that's a call option, and a put option is sort of the opposite, where the buyer of a put option is bearish. They're paying a premium, and they expect the price of the underlying to fall, and they will make money based on that. So a bear is someone who expects the price to fall. And then we've got um, the, the seller of that put option is neutral or bullish. They're hoping that the price will either stay the same or possibly rise a little bit, but they they're not expecting or they're not, uh, they're hoping that it does not fall. And so that is our two types of options. So just to be very clear about it, there's just two types of options. There's calls and puts, and then you can be a buyer or a seller of either of those. And for every buyer, there is a seller. So if you buy a call option, there's someone who's selling it to you. And that's a, something that is uh, agreed upon by both parties because they have opposite point of view points of view. Now, our final little uh, breakdown of options we'll, we'll talk about is the difference between American and European options. So an American option is an option that can be exercised at any time up to and including the contract's expiration date. So Americans, let's just say Americans, they love freedom and they want the freedom to exercise their options whenever they want to. European options are options that can be exercised only on expiration date. So there's just one point when you get to make that decision with a European option. Now, just to be clear, when we call them American and European options, that's just a name they have. Um, it doesn't mean that one is more popular in one part of the world than, than the other. Um, American options are actually the most commonly traded globally because it's not just Americans. Everyone likes freedom. Um, and uh, European options are the easiest ones to price because there's just that one date when a decision gets made rather than, uh, r rather than at any point over the life of the option. And so when we move on to pricing options, you'll see how the pricing is different. Now, just uh, one point we'll touch on is that hopefully it's obvious to you that if you've got two options that are identical, except that one is American and one is European, hopefully it's obvious to you that the American option will be more expensive than the European option. And that's just because it has an extra feature. And whenever something has an extra feature, it costs a little bit more. So that is, that is our first video and introduction to options. And we're going to have a bunch of other videos following up on this. Talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye.